The theme of the present video is the experiments which suggested, designed, developed and accomplished Yanis Sakas, professional engineer in mechanical and electrical engineering and doctor of MIT. In order to demonstrate the feasibility of the legendary accomplishments of the great physicist, mathematician and engineer of the antiquity, Archimedes of Syracuse, by using the technology existing in his era. Jan Sakas was a multi-sided personality, forerunner in the implementation of the alternative energy sources, mainly the solar and wind energy. Devotee of the ancient Greek history, he was regularly present each year in the anniversary of the battle in Plates, whose date he had determined commemorating the honorable death of the warriors defending the freedom of homeland. He was a daughter of the technology as well as all who served her diachronically, Archimedes primarily, whose the most important of his technological achievements verified, the hydraulic horologe, the steam cannon, and uh, the burning of the Roman vessels in the Syracuse harbor, implementing flat mirrors. Some of Yanis Sakas' experiments have been recorded by using the means existing at that time, home cinema, namely four, three of which in 1973 were related to the incendiary action of the sun's radiation, implementing flat mirrors. The fourth one, in 1981, the steam's power in ballistics with the steam cannon. Bronze sculpture of Archimedes by Gerhard Thieme, 1972, Berlin Treptow, Germany. The sequence of the experiments which were designed and executed by Yanis Sakas in order to prove the feasibility of burning wooden targets by the use of flat mirrors constructed with polished copper is the following. Experiment number one, June 24, 1973 at 9.30 in Heliopolis with 50 mirrors at 40 meters distance with success. Experiment 2, July 17, 1973, at 15.30, in Heliopolis, with 100 meters, at 85 meters distance, failure. Experiment 3, July 22, 1973, at 15.30, in Heliopolis, 130 meters, at 100 meters distance, with success. Experiment 4, November 3, 1973, 12 o'clock in Scaramangas, with 60 meters at 55 meters distance, with success. Experiment 5, November 6, 1973, 12 o'clock in Scaramangas, with 70 meters at 55 meters distance, with success. The expenses for the construction of the mirrors were covered by the Technical Chamber of Greece. The grounds for the land experiments were granted by the Public Power Corporation and the site of the experiments on the floating target was granted by the Ministry of National Defense, Hellenic Navy Central Staff, as well as the appointment of the Marines for the manipulation of the mirrors. This is a sketch of the disposition of the mirrors manipulated by soldiers of Litas on site on top of the city walls showing the principle of Archimedes' war machine for setting fire to the Roman vessels in the harbor of Syracuse. Second experiment, burning target on the ground, 17th July 1973, 3.30 post-meridium, 
in Heliopolis. Preparing the arrangement of mirrors. 100 mirrors at 85 meters distance from the target. Mirrors from copper plated glass 0.69 by 170 meters. The officer and the staff. The sergeants. The manipulation and handling of the mirrors was executed by volunteers. The focusing spot. Waiting for more handling volunteers. They are coming, followed by their children. Trying to focus as many mirrors as possible. On to the focusing spot. Yanis Sakas transfers the wooden target onto the focusing spot trying to focus as many mirrors as possible by waving to the handlers. Volunteers representing the Oplites. The target started emitting smoke. Unfortunately, the wind interfered, disarrayed and broke many mirrors rendering this experiment unsuccessful. Third experiment, burning target on the ground. 22nd July 1933, 3.30 post meridian in Heliopolis. Preparing the arrangement of mirrors. 130 meters at a mean distance of 100 meters from the target. The focusing spot. Mirrors from copper plated glass 069 by 170 meters. The target started emitting smoke.
Yanni Sakas places a wind protection barrier next to the target. He shows the point to aim the mirrors. The wind started blowing forcibly, bringing down some of the mirrors. But it did not accomplish to ruin the experiment this time. The target finally got fire, and the flames proved the success of the experiment. Fifth experiment of burning floating target representing the Roman ships using flat mirrors in Scaramangas Bay, 6th November 1973, 12 o'clock noon, Palaska's Admiralty Training Center. Array of 70 copper plated glass mirrors, size 0.69 by 170 meters. The mirrors are held and trained by equal numbered marines. The mirrors are deployed at an angle of two vertical arrays at a mean distance of 55 meters from the target, which is attached onto the side of a small boat. The Navy commanders, officials, VIPs and other spectators. You may see the floating target with the mirror's reflections on the breakwater wall behind. From a script by Yanis Sakas, the boat is rearranged in the shape of a galley with a wall of hardwood lightly coated with tar and pieces of lint representing the fabric of the outfit of the crew and the appendage of the ships. In the preparatory stage, the reflections of the mirrors are scattered horizontally at each side of the target. Half an hour prior and after solar noon, the sun moves at closely horizontal trajectory, resulting to an almost horizontal movement of the static mirror reflection upon the breakwater wall behind the flat boat. The marine retains the boat with the rope and moves it so to keep it in pace with the movement of the mirror reflection. The sun has reached this climax. The order has been given. The mirrors are rotated vertically so as to steer the reflected beam onto the focal point, the boat. The ignition was effected within seconds and in moments after the galley started burning. After three minutes, fire consumes the galley. Two eyewitnesses. The very wide smiles of the day. The triumphant modern Archimedes, the Admiralty, and the VIPs. The Romans realized the effects of using glass to capture the heat from the sun, but 500 or so years earlier, the ancient Greeks had apparently already discovered ways of using the destructive power of the sun's heat. A mythical Greek invention was said to have been used as a weapon against the Romans in the 3rd century BC. 
It was known as the Archimedes Death Ray. In Syracuse, in what is now modern-day Sicily, the inventor Archimedes was planning ways to fend off a Roman attack. A story claims he used the power of the sun to destroy the Roman ships in the harbor. It seems an unlikely claim, yet the story has survived to this day. In 214 BC, the Romans attacked the town of Syracuse. The Syracusans relied on their most famous citizen, the philosopher-inventor Archimedes, to defend the city. Archimedes ordered soldiers to polish their metal shields so they shone like mirrors. He then positioned the soldiers around the harbor and made them reflect the heat of the sun onto the Roman ships below. Archimedes devised a clever system of reflecting mirrors, probably using polished shields, to send a tight, bright ray of light towards the Roman ships in the harbor. That ray would certainly have blinded their navigation and according to some stories, the ships actually caught fire. It is difficult to imagine that the shields could have had such a dramatic effect, yet could hundreds of them really have acted as a death ray? The idea that Archimedes could burn a fleet of ships with a series of mirrors has been ridiculed in many academic circles. Some historians have claimed he used lenses and not mirrors. But one defender of the mirror theory was Professor Ioannis Sakas. Sakas, a tireless experimenter, spent much of his career reconstructing ancient Greek technological weapons and mechanical devices. He decided to put the Archimedes mirror theory to the test. Sakas successfully created a fire using a barrage of polished metal shields. But he decided to take the test a step further with the help of the Greek Navy. Τελικά έφτασε να κάνει το μεγάλο πείραμα το Νοέμβριο του 1973, οπότε χρησιμοποιώντας ναύτες από το σταθμό του Παλάσκα κάτω στον Πειραιά με 70 ασπίδες μεγάλες, καλογιαλισμένες, έκαψε ένα ρωμαϊκό αντίγραφο, δηλαδή ένα μικρό καραβάκι, μια μικρή βάρκα που είχαν τα ρωμαϊκά πλοία της εποχής εκείνης. Amazingly, the experiment proved that the Archimedes death ray really could have worked. So was perhaps not a myth after all. Σε δευτερόλεπτα άρχισε να φαίνεται καπνός και σε δύο-τρία λεπτά είχε καεί. This ancient Greek technology is actually being employed by scientists working today. In an extraordinary parallel, scientists in Colorado in America have created a vast experimental solar-powered furnace which works on exactly the same principle as the Archimedes death ray. It focuses hundreds of mirrors onto a central point, which then heats to immense temperatures of thousands of degrees Celsius. Its future uses include manufacturing for high-tech industries. The steam cannon, invention by Archimedes, according to Yanis Sakas. Simulation and rendition by Alexander Economides. In the initial construction drawings of the steam cannon conception, in order to assess the feasibility of this historical Archimedes invention with materials available in his era, Yanis Sakas indicated a barrel length of one and a half meter, 30 centimeter caliber, five to 10 centimeters of barrels thickness, 60 centimeter boiler diameter, and one meter length. To overcome the constructional difficulties of such a large machine, as well as the unavailability of such a large holy tree trunk, particularly after an unsuccessful search on the mountains over Lastros, Yanis Sakas' birthplace, suitable for the construction of the barrel out of uniform massive wood material, he opted to construct his simulation of the steam cannon in smaller scale, about one-fifth his original design. Schematic rendition of Archimedes steam cannon according to Yanis Sakas. Schematic simulation by Alexander Economides. To clarify certain aspects, some differentiations of the original drawing have been effected. 
as for example the orientation of the incised stay beam by 90 degrees. The cannon structure consists of the following parts. A water repletion funnel. In the drawings example, the funnel is embedded on the inlet of the repletion pipe. A water repletion ball valve. In the experiment's materialization, it has been substituted by a screw cap. A water retention and retrapment pipe. A water restraining valve standing in place for a trigger. An iron vessel for water evaporation, that is a boiler. A pressure equalization pipe and a repletion of the void on the surface of the entrapped water for the purpose of helping the entrapped water to flow by its gravity into the vessel through the sprinkler. A water sprinkler pipe to let the entrapped water flow towards the bottom of the vessel. A barrel turned out of uniform massive wood. Three iron belts reinforcing the barrel. A spherical shell as a projectile. A projectile restraining wooden stick to augment the thrust pressure on the projectile before release. An incised stay beam to resist the push of the restraining wooden stick up to its breaking strength. Incised stay beam holding socket brace. The process of shooting around with the experimental steam cannon is the following. The two valves of the liquid circuit are closed. The repletion funnel is filled with the right volume of water. The experimental volume has been of the order of 6 grams. The vessel is being heated by burning the inflammable fuel wood or coal. During the experiment sticks of dry branches have been used. The repletion valve is open and water running from the funnel fills the vertical pipe section. The repletion valve is closed, resulting in the entrapment of the water within the closed liquid circuit. To energize the shooting, the lower, that is the trigger valve, is opened allowing the entrapped volume of water to run downwards into the vessel through the sprinkler section of the pipe, the flow being enhanced by the help of the pressure equalization pipe. The water flows off the whole array on the lower side of the sprinkler pipe and drops toward the lower inner side of the vessel which has already attained its highest possible temperature. When the water touches the lower inner side of the vessel, it almost instantaneously evaporates and bears pressure on the vessel walls, the pipes of the liquid circuit and the back of the spherical shell being seated within its chamber. The shell is kept there by force of the restraining wooden stick, the other end of which presses the middle of the incised stay beam allowing pressure to be built onto the back of the spherical shell by the steaming process within the heated vessel. When the force built on the shell and transmitted via the restraining wooden stick to the middle of the incised stay beam exceeds its breaking strength, the stay beam succumbs, breaks, and allows the wooden stick to dart forward through the muzzle of the barrel. Having a freeway in front, the couple shell stick propelled by the already built thrust speeds out through the barrel and muzzle to the air toward the target. For a short while the couple shell stick moves together. Then the wooden stick separates itself dropping down due to its larger volume and consequent air friction as well as lower gained momentum, lighter mass, while the shell proceeds toward the target.
Πρέσπε το ρόχο χρειάζεται μέσα ξέρω εγώ ένα δύο λεπτά, ένα δεύτερο λεπτό. Για να εξατμιστεί αναλόγως μια πόσο που θέλει να βάζει χρειάζεται δύο, τρία, τέσσερα, πέντε μέχρι και δέκα δεύτερο λεπτά σε χιλιά εκατό μέτρα. Επομένως αυτό είναι αδύνατο. Άρα πρέπει να χρησιμοποιήσει ένα άλλο κόλπο αρσινίδι. Και είναι απλό το κόλπο, δηλαδή να δει και ο γιος μου ο Γιώργης, που μόλις είναι τραφιλητής, όταν το είπε το βρήκε. Βάζω μία δοχό, βάζω με τη σφαίρα στο πάτο, συγκρατάμε με μία ράβδο εκεί, με ένα βάχτο. Τώρα υπάρχει χρόνος, τα 2, 3, 5, 10 δευτερόλεπτα, να εξατμιστεί το ρονάς, να πιέσει, να πιέσει την μπάλα, να την μπάλα να πιέσει το βάχτο, το βάχτο να σπάσει και το πω, και να πεταχτεί όσο μας πιάτε εγώ. Βγάζετε περιγραφή, να μεταξυχεί όλα αυτά που σας είπα, τώρα πρέπει να τα καταλάβετε τι κάνουμε. Και τώρα αρχίζουμε να βάλουμε φωτιά. Άμα το βάζει το αέρα από κάτω, το κόμμα πάστα. Έξι γραμμάρια έχουμε εδώ μέσα. An exit from Wild Dream Films production about Archimedes the Mechanic. There is great debate as to whether some of Archimedes' weapons are the stuff of history or myth. One of the most contentious inventions is the extraordinary weapon known as Archimedes' steam cannon. Many experts simply cannot believe that anyone could have invented a steam-powered weapon more than 200 years BC. Yet it's clear that the ancient Greeks knew how to harness the power of steam. Heron of Alexandria invented the steam ball, believed to be the first steam engine in history. Even the great Leonardo da Vinci believed Archimedes' steam cannon could have existed. Ο Leonardo da Vinci, από ό,τι γνωρίζουμε, είχε στην κατοχή του χειρόγραφα προφανώς του Archimedes. Τρία από αυτά βρέθηκαν στη βιβλιοθήκη του, τα οποία τα χρησιμοποίησε για να ανακατασκευάσει το κανόνι. 35 years ago, Professor Ioannis Sakas, a leading Greek engineer and leading Archimedes expert, became convinced that Archimedes had indeed invented a cannon powered by steam. O Sakas ήταν ένας Έλληνας μηχανικός, ο οποίος έταξε τη ζωή του ακριβώς στο να ανακατασκευάζει έργα του Archimedes. Ήταν ένα μοντέλο ένα προς πέντε, δεν ήταν πάρα πολύ μεγάλο. The results were surprising. Κάποια στιγμή λοιπόν με τη βαλβίδα αυτή μεταφέρεται ο ατμός μέσω αυτού εδώ του διάβλου και μπουμ, εκτόξευε την, την πέτρινη της σφαίρας σε απόσταση 300 με 400 μέτρων. Ιωάννης Σάκας' home movies show one of his successful experiments with the steam cannon. But could the same experiment be repeated today? For the first time in over 30 years, we put Archimedes steam cannon to the test. Richard Windley, an ancient technology model maker, has built the steam cannon based on Professor Sakas's original designs. The vessel at the back here is made of heavy duty steel, probably bronze in Archimedes time. There's a sub substantial amount of metal there which absorbs massive quantities of heat from the fire. The pressure vessel remains empty until the point of firing, when a small amount of water is dropped via the valve onto the very hot metal inside, creating a build-up of steam pressure. 
The ball sits in the barrel towards the end of the cannon and is held against a collar just at the front of the pressure vessel. It's actually held in place by a wooden rod which runs the length of the barrel. The critical piece of equipment is this brake bar at the front which holds everything in place until the pressure reaches a predetermined limit when the bar breaks and the ball is then free to fly out of the barrel at high velocity. It's astonishing to think that Archimedes could have invented such an apparently modern cannon over 2,000 years ago. The early Greeks were perfectly aware of the um, principles involved. We're talking about huge pressures in these pressure vessels. This is running at a very modest pressure, but it would have been a, a mammoth task to produce the kind of results which are discussed by some of the ancient writers. Massive weights being hurled through huge distances. The success of Archimedes' various war machines eventually persuaded the Romans to abandon the assault on Syracuse and an attempt to take it by blockade.